Hi folks, welcome to this video lesson for core reading number two, Native Americans of the Plains and Southwest, where you read about two different Native American cultures. And we're going to start with that term culture, which means a people's way of life. Now we all have a culture and that includes lots of things. It could be music, customs, holidays, and religion. And so did Native American groups. In fact, one of the most fascinating of all of the Native American cultures was the Northwest Coast Indians. And they're very well known for their fancy carved totem poles and homes and their complicated myths and legends. And in college, I actually studied these guys. I remember I took a class on Native American mask making and I never forgot these really cool transformation masks that the Northwest Coast Indians would put on and they would use these masks to tell stories which are really part of their religion. So if you can imagine someone wearing one of these masks, uh, telling a story at night, dancing, acting out the story around a fire, uh, very, very cool stuff. But because most Native Americans lived a life of survival, the most obvious aspects of their culture usually boil down to the basics of food, shelter, and clothing. Which brings us to our new definition for another vocabulary word, adapt. So if you haven't already added this definition to your unit packet on page one, you're going to want to add that. To adapt, in the case of Native American, means to use a natural resource to meet a basic need, like food, shelter, or clothing. So if necessary, pause the video and please add that to your unit packet. Now, a key idea for this unit is the idea that Native Americans adapted to different environments and as they did their culture was affected. Different Native American groups had different cultures because they live in different environments. And we're going to keep that in mind as we look at these two cultures starting with the Great Plains. And this is where the Great Plains were located between two important geographic features, the Rocky Mountains which were are about here and the Mississippi River largest or longest river in North America right here. And this is what it looked like on the Great Plains. Here's another view and another view. So what's missing? Take a minute and think about it. I'll go back through those pictures again. These are all photographs taken of the Great Plains. What is it that you don't see a lot of or maybe anything of? And the answer is trees. This is mostly treeless grasslands. It is not desert. Plants do grow there, mostly grass. Um, but that one basic resource of trees, wood, was not really available to these Native Americans. Uh, they could trade for it, but uh, they just didn't have access to, for example, the Indians of the Northeast, the Iroquois Indians, which we'll be learning about in our next core reading, uh, actually built their homes out of wood. But for the Native Americans of the Great Plains, wood was a very scarce resource. So there are many different tribes that lived on the Great Plains. And because it was such a large area, the environment wasn't exactly the same across all of the plains. The tribes that lived on the Eastern Plains had better soil for farming. And your reading talked about that. They had better sources of water and some of those Native Americans on the plains did become farmers. But the tribes that lived on the Western Plains did not have good soil for farming, and so they were forced to become nomadic hunters. They were always moving to follow their food source, and this is the, the Native American group we're really going to focus on here. So from this point on, we're going to forget about the Indians of the Eastern Plains over here who were occasionally farmers, and we're going to focus on these tribes here who were nomadic. They were nomads always on the move, searching for their food. And because they were always on the move, uh, one method of their adapting to the environment was their homes were portable. They lived in these teepees, 
which were made out of wooden poles, which again, they probably had to trade for, not a lot of wood on the Great Plains, and leather or animal hide. And these portable homes could be picked up and moved very quickly, just in probably less than an hour uh, when they were on the hunt searching for food and they had to move quickly. They were very, very portable homes. So what were they searching for? What were they hunting? Mostly buffalo. This is their number one resource, buffalo. And not only did they hunt the buffalo for food, they used the buffalo for homes, for clothing, and for many, many other things. So I'm going to have you take a look at this diagram of a buffalo and this photograph also on the left and try to determine what were the Plains Indians using each of these different parts of the buffalo for and what do you think these items are and what do you think they're made of? So here we can see that the Plains Indians use virtually every part of the buffalo, not just for food, but for things like soap, for weapons, tools, glue. They made uh, glue out of the buffalo's hooves, uh, skulls, the brains, the stomach. They even used buffalo poopy for fuel because remember they did not have a lot of wood so it turns out that if you take a buffalo poopy which has a lot of well what did the buffalo eat grass right so if you take a buffalo poopy which is basically uh, recycled grass and you dry it out you can carry that buffalo chip sometimes they're called buffalo chips uh, with you and you can use it to start a fire now, if you look at the photograph on the left, uh, you can probably guess that these here are eating utensils, spoons and, and ladles and things like that, made out of buffalo antler. But most interesting, I think, is object number four, which is a buffalo bladder. And if you're not sure what the Plains Indians used a buffalo bladder for, well, I would ask you, what do you use your bladder for? What does your bladder hold? Well, the answer is it holds water. So the Plains Indians use buffalo bladders and also I think buffalo stomachs to, once they dried them out, they actually use them as little bags to carry water around uh, when they were going on a trip or just, you know, for their basic needs. So the Plains Indians method of adapting involved taking the one resource which was plentiful. There was a lot of it. Uh, in fact, witnesses describe wild buffalo herds in the millions on the Great Plains during this time period. And then using every part of that resource to meet their basic needs. Now let's take a look at the other Native American group from your reading, the Native Americans of the Southwest. And the Southwest culture region was located here. And here is what the environment looked like. It included deserts, mountains, canyons, and mesas, which are flat topped hills with steep sides. But there's one thing all of these environments are missing. Can you guess? And the answer is water. The Southwest is a very hot, arid, dry climate. And that word arid simply means dry. It does not get a lot of rain in the Southwest. But despite this fact, the Indians of the Southwest were able to survive. Now, some of the, the, the Indians of the Southwest were nomads, but the Indian group that we focused on in this reading were called the Pueblo Indians. And they actually became farmers. And they were able to farm using a technique called irrigation, which means bringing water to crops for farming. And there were a variety of ways that they did this. Quoting from the reading, 
Uh, to make the most of infrequent rain, farmers planted near naturally flooded areas like the mouths of large stream beds or the bases of mesas where rain runoff flowed. So they made the best use of the little rain that did fall. And the men dug irrigation ditches from the streams to the fields and built small dams to hold the summer rain. And this is a picture that shows irrigate an irrigation field for farming in the desert southwest. Now their homes were made from adobe brick, which is sun-dried clay. So again, they're using a natural resource, clay, mud, turning it into bricks, and then building their homes. But wait, let's stop here and compare the Southwest Indian Pueblo homes with the Plains Indians shelters that we call teepees. Let's look at how they're different and let's think about why they're different. So we'll stop here and think about that question comparing these two types of shelters. So the the main difference is kind of obvious, right? The Southwest Indian Pueblos are, are pretty big. Uh, in fact, your reading talked about how some of the Pueblo Indian villages could hold a thousand people. But if you look at the teepees, they really only hold one family, all right? Which kind of makes you think, why? Why would the Pueblos live in basically apartment houses compared to the Plains Indians who lived in single family homes? And the answer is really their culture and their environment and how they adapted their culture to the environment. So for the Plains Indians, remember that they are nomads. They're always searching for their food because they're relying on a food source that moves, the buffalo. And so their homes also have to move. But with the Southwest Indian Pueblos, um, they were what we call sedentary farmers. Sedentary means non-nomads. They stayed in one place. And the reason why they stayed in one place is despite the dry conditions, they adapted to their environment by becoming farmers. And if you're a farmer, you have to stay in one place because you have to tend to your crops. You have to water them. You have to take care of them as the crops grow, weed the crops. And when the crops are ready to be harvested, you know, you have to cut them down and, and store the food. So the difference in their homes is 100% connected to how they adapted to the environment. Now, here's another picture of a Pueblo village. This is actually an Anasazi village. The Anasazi were a Native American group that lived before the Pueblos. They were basically the ancestors of the Pueblos. And notice how their village is built into the side of a cliff. And there's a reason for this. Here's another picture, a drawing of a Pueblo Indian village. And one thing you might notice here is the ladders. So why do you think these Native American groups built their homes in the side of cliffs and got into their homes using ladders? Well, the answer is not all of the Indians of the Southwest were sedentary, peaceful farmers. There were actually other groups that were kind of like the, these roving nomads who would occasionally attack the Pueblo Indians. So their homes were built into the side of cliffs for defense. And it's interesting that the, the door to the home was in the top on the roof. So then if they needed to, you know, they would climb into the house on the ladder and then they would pull the ladder up to the roof. So any invading tribes, you know, they wouldn't be able to get into the house, but they had a backup plan. If that didn't work, they had attack turkeys. <laughs> yes, attack turkeys to defend themselves with. So here, let's compare the Southwest and the Plains Indians again. Uh, both groups had limited resources. The Plains Indians lived in an area that was mostly grasslands, few trees, some water, but not great soil for farming. And so they relied on hunting the buffalo for survival. And that one resource was enough to meet most of their basic needs. And because they were hunters, they were nomads. They were always on the move. 
Whereas many of the Southwest tribes, particularly the Pueblo Indians, had very limited resources but were able to uh, become farmers even though they lived in a dry climate. They also adapted to their environment by making their homes out of adobe bricks made out of sun-dried clay. And they used the irrigation techniques to grow simple crops. The most important crop for the Pueblo Indians was corn. And because they were farmers, they were sedentary, which means they did not move. They were not nomads. They stayed in one place to tend their crops. So thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Next up, we are going to be learning about the Native Americans of New York, which was part of the Northeast Woodlands culture region.